Mr. Chairman, Honorable Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, it's my great honor to attend this meeting. Today, I would like to present my paper, China's Image Constructed in Diplomatic Discourse, a Positive Discourse Analysis of the White Paper, Fighting COVID-19, China in Action. My speech will cover the following three, five parts. The first is the introduction of the national image and the diplomatic discourse. The second is the theoretical framework of positive discourse analysis and transitivity in systemic functional linguistics. The third is the design of the research. The fourth is the results and discussion, which is the most important part. The last one is the conclusions. Let's start with the national image. National image is first defined by Bolding as the total cognitive, affective, and evaluative structure of the behavioral unit or its internal view of itself and its universe. There are two approaches about national image study. The first is the self-shaping images, and the second is other shaping images. Previous studies have made great achievements in this study. And our study today will focus on the self-shaping images. As we all know, a white paper is a kind of diplomatic discourse. Diplomatic discourse is defined as discourse and discourse behavior about countries' foreign policy or diplomatic philosophy. So the white paper about COVID-19 um, made by China tends to show other countries China's foreign policy and diplomatic philosophy, and at the same time, it can reflect China's national image. Previous studies on national image usually focuses on the political discourse on news and usually under the framework of critical discourse analysis based on corpus, appraisal theory, and systemic functional grammar. Today, our research will focus on national images under the framework of positive discourse analysis by using diplomatic discourse about COVID-19. And in the textual analysis level, we will use activity system as an analytical framework. The theory of positive discourse analysis involves from the critical discourse analysis, which perceives discourse as an instrument of power and control, as well as instrument of social construction of reality. Positive discourse analysis differs from critical discourse analysis in terms of its intention. It intends to make a comment of the good news advocating equality and peace in a positive manner. So it can promote successful social change. The white paper issued by China is great applicable for positive discourse analysis instead of critical discourse analysis. Systemic functional linguistics has proved a particular rigorous framework of text linguistic analysis for scholars in the field of critical discourse analysis. And it is also applicable for positive discourse analysis. So our study will use the transitivity system in systemic functional linguistics. It covers the processes, participants, and circumstances. And our study will focus on the participants and the processes types. The material in our study is the English version white paper, Fighting COVID-19, China in Action. The context of the white paper is as follows. Let's look at table one. This paper focuses control China, virus, COVID, prevention, etc., which is greatly corresponding to the title of the white paper. The mass of the study can be divided into two steps. The first is the annotation. The second is the data analysis. In terms of the annotation, we will use the UM course too. In terms of data analysis, first we will analyze the pol polarized distribution of transitivity resources, and then we will analyze the image constructed by the transitivity patterns. And then we will summarize the constructive function of diplomatic discourse on national images. So let's look at the results. The overall distribution of transitivity resources 
can be shown from uh, table two. As we can see from here, material process, relational process, and verbal process are the most frequently used processes. And the participants involved in these processes will also be on focus. We'll focus on the actor in material process, the carrier and identifier in the relational process, and also the receiver in the verbal processes. Let's look at the more detailed information. In terms of material clauses, the actor in it is played by China, its leaders, authorities, and Chinese people. They account for 72% of the total. What have the actors done? Let's look at the process verbs. The main process verbs are chair, release, and issue. Let's look at more examples. As we can see from examples, China's leaders like Xi Jinping, Li Keqiang, and its authorities like uh, NHC and government, they have chaired a lot of meetings and have released a lot of documents in order to fight against COVID-19. So China's authorities and leaders act frequently to fight against COVID-19. Look at the data here. The date for the meeting held and for the documents released is very frequently. Then let's look at another example. As we can see from these examples, a series of actions has done by China, Chinese government, and workers and peoples. So China and its government has acted immediately and swiftly to fight against COVID-19. Besides, China's workers and the people also worked very hard from dawn to dusk to fight against COVID-19. So not only Chinese governments and Chinese leaders, but also Chinese peoples works very hard in order to control COVID-19. So the diplomatic discourse here by using material clauses tends to construct China as an active responder to COVID-19. Then let's look at the relational clauses. First, we'll look at the attribute attributes relational clauses Let, let's look at table two table four table four shows the top three high frequency attributes according to Halley, be sure and guarantee equals to make something certain in relational clauses so what is made certain and who made something certain let's look at some examples here so from these examples, we can see that all those in need, patience, livelihood, and normal work and life plays a role at the area. And the Chinese government and China, its authorities play a role at the attributor. So China and its governments tries to make people's lives and their life certain. So we can see that China really takes care of their people. Then let's look at the identifying relational clauses. As we can see from these examples, people's lives and life plays the role as the identifier and its first priority first plays the role as the identified. So China tends to connect people's lives and health with the first priority. It also shows China's care for its people, for its people's lives and for its people's safety, and also for its people's normal life and birth. So the relational clauses in the diplomatic discourse tends to construct China as a responsive power for people. 
Finally, let's look at the verbal clauses in the discourse. The example shows that China plays the role as a seer and the development of the epidemic, the progress of the epidemic control plays the role as the verbiage. And nearly half of the receiver of the verbal clauses is the international community and other countries. So China not only talks to its own members and its own people, but also tends to exchange information and share the developments and progress to the national community. So from the verbal clauses in the diplomatic discourse, we can see that China's image as a cooperator with the national community is constructed. In summary, the diplomatic discourse, that is a white paper about COVID-19 control, shows has a function of construction. It tends to construct China's image, China's positive image. And its constructive function is realized by two ways. For one thing, the polarized distribution of transitivity resources represents the main ways in which events are represented. Hence, this diplomatic discourse mainly focuses on doing, seeing, and forming relations. For another, phrases serving as a participant roles show the key concerns of events. That is to say, the discourse concerns who has done the 